it's hard. I can't fucking like ask. Oh, okay. Do, That's how it looks like when I share my screen on Zoom. Uh, can you guys see my screen? I think you need to Am mute I? your mic. Am I audible? I, I can hear Mike, but I can also hear Afik. Ah, okay, Afik's muted. Okay, so uh, if everyone can hear me, so let me start. Um, so uh, last week, uh, Pepper came and asked me if I can make a talk. So this was quite a rush. I hope um, I have 30 minutes worth of content for you all. Uh, if not else, then we'll just make, a, make this into a... Uh, discussion about why is space exploration so hard. Uh, first off as well, I like to say that I'm not actually an expert on um, interplanetary travels or I'm, I'm not also working in the industry and just someone who's very enthusiastic about this topic right here. Um, my original um, plan was to uh, try to dumb down, um, try to make it easier to understand orbital mechanics. But uh, after listening to uh, all the talks here, I'm, I'm afraid like I might be um, speaking to the choir. So, so for the start, maybe um, let me just try to gauge everyone's understanding. Um, let me see. So um, if you think that the trajectory we take to go to the moon looks something like this, then yes, you, you should, you should uh, listen to my talk. If not, then thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we have uh, we attended our talk. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, so, um, okay, where am I? So, yes, so um, if you do know the, how um, the orbital mechanics works and the trajectory, it doesn't actually look like that. Um, feel free to butt in if I say anything wrong or, or uh, if you have any additional information to add on to whatever I'm saying, okay? So um, I thought this would be an interesting topic because of the recent um, news or the recent um, media around these two billionaire space race. I'm pretty sure everyone has heard of them uh, by now. It, it all happened last month. Uh, Richard Branson with his um, uh, Virgin Galactic Company, this, the Spaceship One, let's call it. And then we have the Jeff Bezos with his Blue Origin and New Shepard. Okay, so this two, uh, let me just talk about, uh, let me just go back a bit about um, space travels. Uh, and, and I guess I wanted to compare a bit about like, what they did and what traveling to the moon is like. So if, so back to the, oh, by the way, this is not to scale. The image is not to scale, but the distance from Earth to the moon is 384,400 kilometers away. That's really far away. So for so if some for some miraculous reason, you are able to take a car and drive at the fastest speed uh, allowed in our express highway and drive straight to the moon, it will take you about 3,495 hours. And that would be that would take you about 146 days. Um, so, which would be totally impossible because you can't do that. You can't um, you can't drive your car to space. Or those uh, there's a company that has already tried sending a car to space. Maybe we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so yeah. So let's go back to like Virgin Galactics. Um, so this is their um, launch system. Um, if you, you see there's um, like three fuselage here. This two right here is called the mothership. They, um, they released the center core here, right here. That's called the spaceship, uh, spaceship one, no, the spaceship two, sorry. So when they reach an altitude um, of about, what is that? Uh, can't remember the numbers, but about 50 kilometers up. Um, they drop the mothership, uh, they drop the spaceship. And then the rockets immediately fires up uh, to the sky, which looks something like this. They reach about um, 86 kilometers um, from sea level, drops back down, and then um, 
Sorry, hold on. So I drop back down, comes back, land back, lands on an airport. Okay. Whole, the whole um, journey takes about two hours plus, and two hours to three hours, if I'm not mistaken. So they did that with Richard Branson. Richard Branson flew on this to space, came back down last month, and everybody, yeah, happy to get the astronaut wings and stuff. Uh, and then Blue Origin, which is on a very separate, different um, vehicle, it, which looks more of a, like a traditional rocket. This one, uh, <laughs> So uh, try try not to uh, try not to um, uh, think too much about the shape. Uh, so the rockets fly from the launch uh, the launch pad and goes up to space. Um, it reaches about uh, what was the number? So it it reached to a certain point. Um, it will separate from its spacecraft or the capsule. And the capsule will coast up all the way to about 107 kilometers above sea level, then comes back down, comes back down, and then with uh, lands with parachutes. So Richard's, Richard Branson's uh, spaceship lands with wings, and uh, Jeff Bezos one lands with parachute. Uh, interesting to note as well that the the boosters lands itself back on the launch pad, uh, somewhere near the launch pad, sorry. Um, yeah. So now, like, I've seen um, the reason I, I, I like to talk about, like, why is it hard to go back to space? Like, I've seen people, um, there's a petition to say, like, let's not get, let's not let Jeff Bezos come back from space. And uh, and I don't know why there is such a petition, but uh, even if the petition went through and people say let, if everyone agrees to not let Jeff Bezos come back from space, uh, it would be impossible on the vehicle that he went on. There is no way that he uh, we could have let him stay in space because what um okay so what Jeff Bezos and Richard Branson's um, uh, space company or this flight does is what we call a suborbital flight. So what that means is uh, that they have not achieved orbit and hence they cannot stay in space. Okay, so um, how do you go to, how do you achieve orbit? Uh, yeah, so in order to achieve orbit, you have to go up um, high above um, all the atmosphere that we have so that we do not have atmospheric drag. And you have to go really fast sideways um to a point where like um, okay so if you see from if you see from this this arc right here um it's very very simple that you understand that when you go up you have to come back down because of gravity so imagine like um imagine if you if you're able to throw a ball uh, a cannon so far so fast and so far um uh, so far, so fast and so far that at the rate it drops back to uh, the Earth, it never falls towards the Earth. So uh, let me see how I can elaborate that further. So let's say you've thrown this far and you reach A, uh, and then you throw it a bit further, you reach B. If you throw it even further, you might reach all the way around and it never falls back to Earth. So when you are able to achieve um, that, that means you are on, you are, you are in orbit and you will never come back to earth unless you do something about it. Or unless like maybe you are, you, you, you're too low that uh, there's some atmospheric drag that you have to come back to space, uh, come back to earth, sorry. So, um, so how fast do you have to go to go to orbit? The answer is, at, um, at 200 kilo, if you want to audit at 200 kilometers uh, above sea level, you have to go about 7.8 kilometers per second. Uh, and that's about 28,000 kilometers per hour. Okay. So to give a bit of perspective on how fast that is, that is like eight times faster than the fastest jet we have. Uh, that is 46 times faster than the China's uh, latest maglev train. And that's 254 times than the maximum speed level at our express highway. 
So you can imagine now, like this is like, like whatever uh, going to orbit is ludicrous speed. Uh, so it's very difficult. You you can't use um, Jeff Bezos vehicle to <laughs> to go to orbit. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, so so just like to explain that that where um. Yeah, just just want to put this here is to imagine to let you imagine further. Like we are always um, under the force of gravity, and this is the space, the speed that is injected for every satellite that's in orbit. So we always stay in orbit due to this. And yeah, so congratulations! Now you are in um, space. So what about going to the moon? So let's say not just to the moon. What about like going to uh, uh, Mars, for example, right? So, how difficult is that? For uh, okay, to illustrate a bit about the moon. So, this is actually the real distance uh, to scale. So, um, from Earth to the moon, um, you can actually you can actually fit thirty Earths between the Earth and the moon. So, it is actually pretty far away. You need you need a big rockets. Uh, so just to, illust just to illustrate a bit about the rockets sizes, uh, this, this is a bit of comparison. So uh, that's electron and um, it can take, so what this means is that um, how many kgs it can take to low earth orbit. Low earth orbit is about, is from about 200 kilometers to 2000 kilometers. So this is electron. Electron um, is a very, very uh, up and coming uh, commercial uh, commercial space uh, company that they are they launch multiple uh, satellites into low Earth orbit and yeah mostly satellites they can't launch any humans. This is Soyuz. Soyuz is the Russian rocket that um, uh, for the longest time has been sending uh, a lot of cargo and humans to the ISS. This. Yeah, so, and now this is the, I think the one that people are more like, they, more in the media that people know about is Falcon 9. Yeah, so this is a bit, bit about the size comparison. And um, here is the New Shepard booster, the booster that Jeff Bezos took compared with the Falcon 9 booster. So you can see now like how much more rockets uh, you need in order to, to go to space. Here, you, you, can't, um, you can't really let Jeff Bezos stay in space with uh, the new Shepard booster. It's just not fast enough. Uh, yeah. Hope that, yeah, hope that, hope that, under, hope you understand that and try not to sign that petition next time. Yeah, more, more a bit. Um, so to go to the moon, you need a rocket the size of this, Saturn V. This is the rocket that, um, this is the rocket that took the, this is the rocket from the Apollo mission that took uh, the Americans to space back in 1969 to 1972. Um, sorry, did I drop off? Hello. Okay, I hope I can still, I'm still audible because I can't see anyone right now. It's okay, so I'll just continue. No, yeah. I can hear you, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, so one of the things that uh, most of these are like um, satellite rockets. Uh, this is the rockets that took, um, this, this Atlas V right here is the rocket that took the Perseverance rover to Mars uh, back in March, 2020. Yeah, and this, this, this is the rocket that took uh, Tesla's uh, uh, Musk, Elon Musk Tesla to space, and this, yeah, this this all this, this is um, uh, this also took uh, this is also a commercial payload and also like uh, the U.S. government uh, payloads to I can take up to geo geostationary orbit and also take it up to Mars. So from here, like you might ask, like. Why, why if I can send a rover from Atlas, uh, using Atlas V to Mars, I can't, and, but like to, in order to go to the moon, I need like a Saturn V. This, this rocket is so big, right? So much big, bigger than Saturn V. So um, the answer to that is 
because you need to take humans to space. Uh, when you need to take humans to space, you need a lot more payload. Uh, you need you need life support systems. You need all the communication systems. You need bring food supplies and everything. So it's just um, yeah, it's just a lot of payloads, and you need you need a big rocket. Uh, mm, yes. Yeah, so let me explain a bit about um, going to moon. So. In order to go to the moon right now, um, if you have let's uh, let's come uh, let's uh, get back to the orbit that we have. So we have an orbit around Earth, right? In order to go to the moon, um, you cannot just you cannot just point your your rocket to the moon and fire away and hope that you can reach the moon. Um, it doesn't work that way because of again yes gravity, uh, orbital mechanics because of the Earth gravity. Um, you have to time your you have to time your trajectory uh, in when the moon moves to a certain location, and you have to change your orbit uh, to to something like uh, the one uh, in the dotted line right here. So when you raise your orbit to and and by the time you reach this point right here, you would you would intercept the moon. So. So once you intercept the moon, uh, then you can you can then make your orbit around the moon. Um, okay, so big house check. Uh, is everyone still with me? <laughs> uh, am I too? Yep. If I'm playing too fast, like something not understand, just feel free to uh, stop me. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I the Q and A mm, Yeah. So actually, I. That's about it uh, for my. If you want to know more about the details, I could talk a bit about the details of actually how the Apollo mission profile was. But I just actually I just wanted to um, put out the basics of not orbital mechanics uh, out there so that like everyone can understand. Uh, but I, I, if everyone already understood, uh, <laughs> if everyone already understood, then I think we can just end the talk right here. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Pepper, some, uh, something, uh, something you want to share about? <laughs> you, you read the chat now. <laughs> the chat now. Hold on. Okay, you you stop sharing your screen so that everybody can see you. Uh, and then, uh, does anybody have any uh, questions to ask? Uh, Mike? Oh yes, I I got. <laughs> Jeff Bezos sucks. Um, actually, it looks more. <laughs> But it is, it is, he's a sore loser, you know. Uh, <laughs> I would, I it would. It is, man, come on, um, you have to, you have to uh, admit it. He, he, I wouldn't, um, any, any company that's, that's doing space travel, um, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, as long as they are not slowing down, but whatever he's doing is actually like trying, just trying to slow down the process of, uh, everyone. Uh, to 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 explore space, yeah. That wasn't more much of a question, but uh, more of like uh, an opinion on Jeff Bezos. I got question, but like yeah, I I still do respect like whatever like whatever the people that in his company is trying to, whatever he is doing right now in them them there's a lot of controversy around it, but. Uh, Try not to focus on that, I guess. Yeah. So actually everyone understands space space mechanics, right? Orbital mechanics. So that's why I like uh, wait, wait, wait. Pakun, Pakun hasn't asked his question yet. Um okay. Okay, big question, huh? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. SN20 BN4. Do you think uh, those SLS gonna gonna work? Can can SN twenty reach orbit and return back safely at Pacific? I don't, I don't know when they're gonna do that. Actually, um, they're still I, constructing the thing. Um, I do not know. Uh, I do follow that. Uh, I do follow that prototype. Uh, mission, uh, prototype mission closely, but there, there's just not much information um to give and very educated guess. Uh, I would say that there there is a chance that the the prototype will blow up on the launch pad. <laughs> uh, 
that, that there is a high chance that would happen uh, because they have not fired so many uh, so many uh, engines. Uh, the Raptor. Oh, come on, man! At the first, uh, <laughs> before it's it, it, it. I would say I would give a thirty percent chance that 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 it would blow ah, up. Ah, come but on! That, <laughs> but that's just a, just that's just speculated uh, estimate. <laughs> Uh, okay, if, that, if not, if, if not on blowing out on the launch pad, I, I think they they will have uh, it's either that or on re-entry something will happen to to SN20. Yeah, uh, the reason they are landing it on Pacific because uh, they, they're not they, they, they don't want to lose mass, you know, because when the rocket explodes uh, while landing on the on the land, it's going to explode more. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It is yeah. It, whatever they're doing is very cowboyish, because if it explodes, if it explodes on the launch pad, it 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 is gonna cause a lot of disturbance to the nearby township over there. It's yeah, okay, yeah. because the 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 idea for Tesla's uh, system is he's actually he's actually building factories that make engines, so he's actually churning out engines every every yeah. day yeah. just to like. You know, like tweak this, tweak this. So his idea is to fail. Yeah, as many yeah, times yeah. As possible. The, their their philosophy was is always just um as fast as possible, fail, fail as fast as possible. I just hope that like if it it, it really doesn't explode on the launch pad, <laughs> because uh just okay, just with the explosion on the ship alone, that there were there were there were houses, glasses being shattered nearby. So he, Whatever they're doing is good, but like let's focus on the safety as well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I would say yeah, yeah. So I would say it's either long, blow up on the launch pad or like it, it will it will burn up on, on re-entry. I think space travel is only going to work if somebody finds a way to monetize it. Uh, right now, you know, NASA is just NASA and all these other uh, space agencies are doing it. Uh, but they they're doing it for science. So if you no, want it to, China is actually doing going to the moon because they want the hydrogen there, right? The yeah, hydrogen? China. I think China is doing it. it mainly for well, starting with bragging rights first, and then I don't know. <laughs> I don't what. Yeah, what? <laughs> because you said really? on on the moon, there's a lot of what what's that? You can actually mine it for hydrogen or something like that, lah. That you is can actually use helium three all the way there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, asteroid mining, you can actually go look for like uh, rare mineral metals like palladium and a lot of things. There, there, there are um, there are certain rare minerals that it makes more sense to uh, mine in space because of how uh, because of how toxic it is to do to do it on Earth. Uh, but uh, currently, there, there there are some companies looking into it, but there aren't any practical companies doing it right now. Uh, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't say there is no uh, commercial reasons to go to space. If 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 there really isn't, then you wouldn't see SpaceX doing all of this. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't see all the millionaires doing all the stuff because yeah, you wouldn't see. So, but but Jeff Bezos and and Richard Branson is focusing on tourism right now. Uh, I I just thought that we, uh, the 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 two of them, uh, Bezos and and Branson, is just doing it for tourist dollars. That's that's all. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bezos do, do. company does have uh, plans to make uh, to do commercial um, launch uh, commercial yeah commercial launching for for orbitals, but but they haven't they haven't delivered anything yet. <laughs> they don't even have engine for that man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, they haven't even delivered the engines. Yeah. But but Richard Brands um. Actually, Richard Branson also has uh, another company called Virgin Orbit, uh, which recently um, they finished some tests to to send some payloads into space. Um, that's also using airplanes. Uh, yeah, he was he put a rocket on a big. Uh, forgot what model of the plane is some Airbus. Yeah, so and it launched it launched to space on the rocket, similar way. <laughs> Mining for helium three on the moon. Yeah, helium three. Oh, helium three. Okay. Yeah. 
there are some um, hydrogen yeah. we got a lot of hydrogen it's, it's, yeah it's helium that we don't have any more of yeah because helium is actually quite rare but I don't watch know. out for the nazis watch out for the nazis <laughs> yeah nazis are in space <laughs> yeah, stupid movie <laughs> Hey, there's, a, there's a series about that, right? I forgot that. Yeah, there's movies. a whole bunch of movies. That are... I think there's two movies about it. Get worse and worse. Yeah. Anybody else has got a question? If not, uh, looks like all this one whole month of planning this uh, APA is, is going to come to an end now. <laughs> okay. Thank you for people coming. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love, I love it. I, I, I love the talk, man. Come on. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do more. Um, uh, when, uh, yeah, when I have more energy. <laughs> yeah, we really have to meet up, lah. It really is just terrible. I, 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 uh, uh, I think, I think we will have to meet up once, once we, everybody is vaccinated. Then we'll uh, have a proper one, and then we'll, we'll write to, um, uh, you know, professors and whatnot. But I think this is a really great start. And you know, uh, at first I was I was thinking of writing to professors and whatnot, and then I thought you know it, within our group we've got so many good people you know like uh, Mike and Afik and and uh, um, uh, 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 Shern and all that. So I thought what yeah, what if we just start with you guys first and then we'll move on to other people. In fact, I rather I rather also listen to like uh, grad students and stuff like that, rather than people who are pursuing the research rather than doctorates and. Also, people are generally more interested, like like Mike and stuff like that, yeah. Because it's actually more relatable if you're yep. if you have all these guys who come in and they are like you know like PhD of astrophysics and blah 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 blah, then it's, sometimes I feel it's less relatable. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we the, the the audience is is uh, not um, our audience is kind of like layman kind of audience, and, and then I had the, I I also had this idea of. Um, of inviting two um, two religious at, at first when if Mike couldn't make it I, I I actually thought of inviting two religious people to come and tell us why they think God is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, oh wait, luck, luckily Mike said okay. <laughs> yeah, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> you uh-huh. might just leave those two guys in the room. And I I I actually I I don't know what I should talk about when you ask me about it. So like, uh yeah. <laughs> Just talk, just talk a bit about orbital mechanics maybe that's enough <laughs> no i think it's fine i think it's something that's interesting uh, i think that that's mm-hmm. that's better than uh trying to wow us with 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 you know some luckily you didn't ask me you know i would have to talk about electronic circuits and yeah. <laughs> repairing yeah, that, stuff no, that, would, that would have been fine actually that, that would have been fine if, if you could have, if you could have uh, shown some stuff that you are repairing or whatever I think repair. that, Science Your stuff as well. I think that, that's that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do that for the next uh, 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 a possible talk. Yeah. Okay. If there's no nothing else, I think it's it's been quite a long afternoon. So yeah. thank you to all the speakers. Uh, whoever is still here. Yeah. Uh, Shen is still here. Afik is here. Mike is here. Thank you so we'll much. Try to get the the videos up when we get Hopefully. it up, lah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, we'll release it by by weekly or whatever. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Anyway, we can makan. We'll definitely go and makan. Okay. 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 Thanks so much. Thanks everybody. Thanks for. Thank you. Attending. Thank you everyone. Bye. Yep. Bye. Yeah. We'll wait for you to all leave first before we we leave. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks and Adi and uh, this uh uh Quan uh, Quan Jet as well for for helping us liven up the break time. If not uh, the break time, we're like so boring. Everybody just leave you know so mm. <laughs> luckily i got that idea yeah luckily this artist said oh okay well i'll play i'll play some some of these bastardized uh classical and he kept he kept telling me oh uh, can i send you something uh, uh to to listen to first i'm thinking like no lah just just present it lah why why, why are you so afraid of <laughs> it's not bad what huh? <laughs> yeah it's like those science fiction sounds you know you go to science fiction shows you can hear the music that's yeah, music. You know, it's kind of like that, like yeah. those, those. Unfortunately, I would say like like B grade movies, like they make those science fiction, and they have no money. Oh, 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 right. <laughs> they, they yeah, put yeah, on yeah. all those <laughs> science yeah, 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 futuristic yeah. music that you listen to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I did that. That could some, be something you could think about. Uh, 
finding a, 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 a piece and, and say that this could be great for Star Wars or whatever. <laughs> well, even games Runner. nowadays, la. games nowadays, yeah. you know, all those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So your, your, your own interpretation for that particular uh, uh, sci fi game or something like that. Oh, like that. Yeah, something like that. I don't, I don't know. It's, it could be an idea. Could be an idea. Actually, if I, I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking actually of writing a sci-fi, oh. sci-fi inspired piece, but it, it was so difficult actually. I, uh, yeah, I, I had this. I had the software. I, I was planning on something like that, even to make a business out of it. Some 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 freelance business of writing some sci-fi sounding music. But it was so difficult mostly because my skill is not there that I can actually write stuff like that. Well, take it one step at a time, you know. Take it one yeah. step at a time. You, 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 you yeah. You got to start somewhere. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Hey, thanks, Terence and uh, uh, Nora. Thanks so much for lending us your Zoom as usual. See ya. Okay. See ya. End meeting for all. Yeah, end meeting for all.